I know there's some of you out there screaming and hollering at me because I used a track saw to cut this thing and then a saw saw to cut the bottom. Here's the deal. Uh, yeah, I know it could potentially uh, mess up the, the, the end here. I might end up having to join it anyway, but uh, this is three inches thick. I only need two inches. So the bottom inch of this is gonna be gone once I get going. So um, I really was not overly concerned about it too terribly much. We're gonna fix that later on. Uh, main thing was to get it uh, as square as I could get it straight off the bat so I could get it into the kiln.
All right, so what you see here is one of the outside uh, slabs, the live edges on this side. This is supposed to be the straight edge. And after it dried, you can see that we have a split that came along right here. Now, good thing is I've got cut this about six inches longer than I needed. So I will be able to take out a good portion of this, but I'm still going to end up with this and it's going to be on the end. So what I'm going to attempt to do is kind of separate a little bit so that I can get in uh, some wood glue, get down in there. And then I'm going to try to suck it back up into position and then suck it over and see if that will get it close enough to where I can glue it back together. Because once I glue it back together, uh, obviously I'm going to go ahead and flatten this thing all the way across. That will take care of any problems I've had here. And then I'm going to go ahead and do another straight cut or, or plane it. I'm probably going to have to do another cut because I had lost a piece over there. So that's what we're going to try to do. So we'll see how that well this works out. Obviously the hardest part is going to be here because you have some cohesion with the glue not wanting to go down in there. It's just kind of sticking kind of like water would. I have to kind of force it down in there, I think. Alright, so as you can see, it didn't quite suck up as tight as I wanted. I may try to put another plant there to see if I can get it to get a little tighter. There's a lot closer. Yeah, I think that'll work. All right, so we're gonna let that dry. And then move on to um, cutting the straight edge, or go ahead, I wanna, yeah, go ahead and cut this again, clean it up. 
to move on to joining it to the middle piece. So if you're anything like me, you don't have a way to stand up these long, uh, pretty wide slabs. So like this one's like 22 inches across, a little over 10 foot long. So what I did was to get it stand up, I took some old cinder blocks and just put them right next to it. And it seems to hold it up. I mean, it's gonna wiggle a little bit, but that gives me at least uh, the ability to run the planer across the top and work on flattening this out so that I can join it uh, with the other slab, which is on my flattening table, which uh, I already put together the two pieces. I didn't get it recorded, but anyway. So I got these two pieces put together. So now I need to go ahead and plane this across, level it out, make sure it's perfectly square as I can get it, and then go ahead and join the, uh, that with the other two. So we got all the pieces put together, 
Uh, I didn't get a video of the gluing the biscuits in, uh, but you know how that works. Anyway, uh, I put every clamp on here I have, <laughs> trying to make sure this thing stays straight. Uh, I've got some two inch tubing here, clamped down to make sure it stays flat, and then three inch tubing there, clamped down to that two by four. So uh, hoping that will All right, so I've been standing on this thing for quite a while, and I wanted you to see where we're at. Hopefully you can see that reflection we got there. I have this sanded down to a thousand with the exception of the spot I have to do a little work on. Um, but the rest of it is sanded down to a thousand. And you can see it is pretty close to glossy, even without anything on it. It really brought out the color. So a customer has asked me to go ahead and try to turn these ends to like a live edge. So I'm gonna really uh, hit it with the, the heavy duty sander and we're gonna sand this thing down and give it more of a live edge look on both sides. Uh, obviously I still need to cut the other side over there and we're gonna do the same thing there and then I have to work on both the live edges here. Uh, but the plan is because I still have, um, still have some cracks in areas I'm gonna have to epoxy. Uh, I did not wanna leave the wood open uh, and uh, the, all the pores open because it, it, I have an issue with the epoxy staining the wood darker. So what we're going to do is we're going to put one layer of our Odie's oil on there, let it dry, and then we're probably going to come in and tape up all the little holes where we're going to be filling in from the bottom, and then we'll be able to flip this thing over, and hopefully that will keep it from um, staining uh, the, this side here. Obviously, I've got some holes where the worms were, that go all the way through and so we're going to take these up really well uh, and hope that they don't leak when I pour the epoxy in there and fill those in. Alright so I have uh, finished sanding down the top of it down to a thousand grit. I've uh, got it just about as smooth as I want to get it. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and put on our first layer of this Odie's oil. Uh, this stuff is pretty awesome. It's been around for a while. Um, you put on probably up to three or so layers of this stuff, uh, and once it cures, it hardens and it won't, won't even, you know, won't leave a water ring or anything like that. Uh, it's all natural. It's got a pretty decent little smell to it, kind of citrusy smell. But it just goes on with the white scotch pad. Uh, you just buff it in there, let it sit for about two hours, and then come back and just buff it off, buff it off, buff it off until you can't even see a fingerprint on there. And uh, then let it cure for a day, and then you wait about a day between each, uh, each coat. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to put the first coat on, let it dry, because I need to be able to put the epoxy in there and this wood is so porous that if I don't uh, put a layer of this Odie's oil on it and let it cure, but when I go to try to put the epoxy in the holes, uh, it's going to make a dark spot. So uh, this will seal the top of it and keep that uh, 
epoxy from getting down in there and making dark spots. So you can see how that Odie's oil really brings out the color in this elm. 